Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars, and here's this week's quick tip for luthiers. The other day I got a question from a viewer about how I design uh, the guitars that I'm going to build, and specifically what they wanted to know is how do I determine whether or not the neck can be level uh, with respect to the guitar body, or whether or not I need to angle the neck in order to achieve proper string action. And the answer is actually fairly simple but it does take a little bit of an explanation and let me try to do that for you. Um, it all has to do with the distance between the top of the body and the bottom of the strings where the strings come off the bridge when the bridge or the saddles are adjusted in their lowest position. What you want to achieve when the bridge or the saddles are in the lowest position is you want the strings to be touching the, uh, the last couple of frets on your guitar neck. And then what you'll do is you'll measure that distance between the bottom of the string and the top of the body. Now my rule of thumb is if I can keep that distance to around three tenths of an inch or 0.3 inches in decibel, I can keep the neck flat. If the bridge on the other hand if that distance is around a half an inch or more, I'm going to have to angle the neck in order to achieve proper string action. Now, a lot of guitars like Telecasters and Stratocasters use a bridge design that can typically, in the lowest position of the, the bridge or the saddles, the string is going to be about around three tenths of an inch. So that's why Strats and Telecasters have the neck uh, flat in relation to the body. Uh, a Gibson Les Paul or a Gibson SG on the other hand uses a, a tunematic style bridge and when that bridge is lowered all the way down to the body the distance between the bottom of the strings and the top of the body is about a half an inch so it's quite a bit more and as a result in order to bring the strings down to where they would touch those last few frets the neck has to be installed at an angle. Now the other question that's going to come up is how do you determine that angle? Well, there's really three ways that you can do it. One way is to do a full-size CAD drawing of your guitar's side elevation as you're looking at the side. And then you would include all the components and then check to see when the string is leaving the bridge and heading to the nut, what is what is the height? Is it, is it touching those last few frets? And if it's not, you can angle the neck in your drawing in order to bring those strings down until they touch. And of course, that's with the bridge in its lowest position. And another way is to do a series of fairly complex mathematical calculations in order to determine what that angle is going to be. And unfortunately, I don't really have time in this video to lay out that that mathematical calculation. And another way that you can do it is to use an online neck angle calculator. And I've actually found one that I've used for a number of years in order to get an idea of what that angle needs to be. And I'll put a link down in the description below. And if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I've used it because all my guitar necks are level. Um, but I think it does kind of explain what that mathematical calculation is in case you want to do it the old school method with a pen and paper. So uh, that's basically the uh, approach that I use, the rule of thumb that I use for determining whether or not the neck needs to be level or angled. Three tenths of an inch, you can keep it level. Anything you know approaching a half an inch or more, you need to go at an angle. So hope that helps. Take care, and we will see you soon.